Hey guys, this is a mini tutorial based off my most recent video uploaded on Thursday of me drawing this picture of the Winter Soldier. I figured I would discuss what goes on after I finish drawing my portrait pictures because I don't think I've ever really addressed that in detail. So this is my scanned picture. This is the picture that I've gotten after I put my drawing in the scanner, scan the picture, and my program that I have allows me to crop the scan down so I don't have to do extra work in Photoshop. So this is a straight scan, this is directly what I get. And you notice right off the bat it looks pretty flat in terms of values. <laughs> Unfortunately this is pretty much as dark as I can get with graphite. So I need the aid of Photoshop to help really push those values to get me what looks like this. So it's a bit of a jump but I'll walk you through all of the steps that I take to get this effect. So the first thing that I want to do is address any extra cropping that needs to be done. So you'll see down at this bar here at the bottom, there's like this white bar that needs to go away. So what I usually do is I find where like discrepancies are, like right here. Doesn't look so pretty, so I'll typically crop up there. And this picture was already... Um, rather aligned in terms that it wasn't crooked so it didn't look like this in my scan so I if it did look sideways or something then I would adjust that but since it's not uh, don't have to worry about that and that's pretty much it for that in terms of the cropping so that job is done I'm gonna take you guys over here remove all this stuff <laughs> all right so this bottom picture is the same Man, I cut that crop pretty damn close. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that I typically do is I lighten up the background because I try and have a more pure white background with all these portraits. What I'll typically do is... You cannot see that. Oh, low <laughs> opacity. All right, so um, you'll probably notice some subtle difference mostly in the hair. I don't want to do it too much because then it would look like way too white. Like if I were to make a... Just a white section right here. Pure white just does not look right. So I don't want to go for pure white. I just want to make it look kind of nicer and brighter. So it doesn't have all that kind of gray from the scan and my hand and oils and stuff. And that's what this next layer is too. These little outline sections are just where I added extra white. I made it very subtle. I have low opacities with both layers. Now here's where the fun begins. <laughs> I uh, adjust the levels of the drawing to make it the darks darker and the lights lighter. Now to create these sort of things you go down here to this little uh, circle cut in half light dark looking thing and you click on that and you go to the levels button and you click on that and you're gonna have this little ignore the changes and you're gonna have this little box come up. Actually, I'll just go ahead and make a new one just so you guys can see it from a... Uh... Alright, so here's a new one. So, when you make one, it doesn't make any changes for you. It's just showing you where you are right now in terms of the grays and blacks and stuff. So here's your range. This is telling it that you can go all the way down to black and all the way up to white. If you move this, you'll notice that all the whites will get darker because where these arrows are are where the color range is selected or the value range is selected from. So if I go up here it's not going to choose anything below that arrow or above that arrow. And they also have, I don't know if this is on every version of Photoshop, but at least in my version of Photoshop, they have the arrows nicely color coded. So the darker ones deal with the blacks, the lighter ones deal with the whites, if I can, there we go, <laughs> if I can click on it. And this middle guy uh, he deals with the grays, so everything in between. So this is pretty much where I would adjust it and like, you know, bring it over. You don't want to do it too drastic, like you don't want to go like, oh, extreme, because it just doesn't, it, you, like, there's only so much you can really fix artwork with Photoshop. You don't want to go too drastic with it because you'll just kill all the effects and work that you did for it. So you really got to aim for more subtle changes. And then these little guys are also a lot of fun. Um, they also correspond with the values. This darker looking one deals with the blacks, this deals with the grays, this one deals with the whites. So if you click on this guy, 
it's going, and wherever you click on the picture, it's going to make that 100% black. So if I click on the hair and I say I want the hair to be 100% black, it's going to sort of do it. It didn't do it as much as I thought it was going. There, okay. It just depends on what spot I click on because there's a lot of little pixels in between. This is kind of a big picture. But anyway, so now all that little, that little pixel and every matching pixel is going to be turned to black. And then you can come over here and do the same to white and say, well, what area is going to be pure white? Well, it's going to be around here. And there you go, pure white. But a lot of the times it's going to do crazy stuff like this. So it's usually best to do uh, manual adjustments instead of... Oh, that, was, that was wild. <laughs> you want to do manual adjustments instead of like playing around too much. But I mean, it all depends on what you need for your artwork. So what I usually do is I just manually adjust things over here. Typically with portraits, unless I absolutely need to, I don't usually move the white. I don't even remember what I did in this one. Oh, I did move it a tiny bit. Yeah, I moved it such a small amount. Um, but yeah, so this was the one that I made that I stuck with for this one. It still wasn't getting the look across that I wanted, so I ended up making another one in which I did do the pure black and pure white, I believe. But I lower the opacity to 33% so it won't be as strong. So I'll still get like all of these effects, but not to the same extent. So if I were to have this at 100% like that, like that is way too much. That just looks ridiculous. It doesn't even look like the picture anymore. So something more subtle is definitely better in this case. And that's just dealing with levels. You can also play with, um, where is it? Brightness and contrast. Here we go. This one just deals with the brightness and the contrast of the picture. The more brightness you add, the like wider it's going to be and the darker it's going to be. <laughs> and here's what you see what I mean about that whole gray stuff in the background, like that's what I'm talking about. And then the contrast just kind of deals with the blacks. But yeah, I decided not to do that with this one, but just because I didn't feel like it was worth the need. And then my other issue with this picture was that the gun wasn't dark enough for me. A lot of that was due to like me being lazy and not taking the time to do it manually. So I, I cheated a tiny bit <laughs> by uh, making it darker. I also didn't want it to be too light because it's a, the focus is supposed to be over here towards the face. And if you have this aerial light, it's going to take the eye away from that. And I don't want to do that. So this just helps keep things, your eyes more over here. And I discussed that in more detail in my previous mini tutorial video that I will link <laughs> in the description below. And this last layer is, uh, well, there's two more layers, but this one, uh, the last real editing one is just uh, me touching up the highlights because for this particular picture, I wasn't able to properly do highlights like I normally would. My white gel pen is dead and I was really too done with the picture to deal with acrylic paints. So I just manually did some highlights in Photoshop. And as you can see, I didn't even do that much. It's mostly, uh, I think that was just black lines right here. <laughs> but yeah, just little things mostly in the hair, just adding some little white hairlets, strands, <laughs> that's the word. <laughs> and this last layer doesn't do too much um, that you would notice, but it's just to cover my butt. Uh, sometimes the scans happen to pick up some color and I don't want any color on this picture. So what I do is I make a new separate layer and I could have turned this entire thing into grayscale, but I like to have more manual control over everything. So I'd rather make more adjustment layers than permanently change anything about it. So that's why I make a new layer. I set it to color and it doesn't have to be black. It can be anything on the gray scale over here and it will do the same thing. So it could be this color. It's not going to change. It could be white. It's going to be the same. As long as it's on the gray scale, it will change the entire image to black and white. And that was it for this picture. My process is pretty similar for all my other portraits that I've done and probably will do in the future. 
I try not to adjust too much. I really want to try and keep and stay true to the original drawing. It's only minor touch-ups and it's only a lot of it is only because I am not a skilled enough artist to be able to do these things otherwise. Plus, everybody needs to adjust scans after they scan a picture. Like, there's no avoiding it. Even if you take a picture, it's never ever gonna look as good as it does in real life with traditional art. <laughs> it's very unfortunate. All this technology in 2016, and yet we still have yet to find a way to properly represent our traditional art on the computer. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that's it. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. Thanks for watching. Bye.